Alex Press. Test, test. Test, test. Are we live? All right. Hey, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I want to say thanks to everybody for coming to join the overview of Dev Innovate. Uh, we had this at the Cisco Live in San Francisco in May when we first announced it. We are in beta, and this is an opportunity to learn about what we're doing to provide a very accelerated platform for developers. Uh, I like to say that we're putting the tools of production into the hands of innovators, and you'll see why when I explain what we provide. It's a turnkey system that allows you to get everything you need up and running to write apps right away and write them in scale. And I'll explain a little more about that in a moment. The problem that fundamentally we're trying to solve is this problem, where you have somebody that's very creative that understands how to solve a business problem, an innovator or a developer shop or a team of people. They create this new prototype that can be developed to really fundamentally change a business's model. They'll show this to the individuals in charge. This could be their customers, this could be the executives, this could be their own department, with what they can do that fundamentally changes the business. Every executive looking for a competitive advantage, the ability to move faster. So of course they will say, this is something I want to get to market with now. And at that point we have this fundamental challenge. It's running a real network. It's the engineering and operations team that understand how to get things running in scale, that looks at this innovation and says, that's a fantastic innovation. What's your security profile? What kind of scale can you achieve? Have you tested this on our network? What's the impact to our network? The kinds of things that become real when you take it out into the market. So of course they have to re-architect this whole solution, take the spirit of the innovators, and then go through a complete rework to make it something that's deployable in their network. So how can we change that? That's the goal of Dev Innovate. What we're effectively doing is taking an entire engineering build of the things that networks are built upon today, virtualizing them, putting them in a small platform, exposing the APIs, and allowing the innovators to start building their applications on the kinds of networks and systems that are deployed today. Generally, a lot of the innovators are starved. They don't get the best resources. They get very generic compute, some cloud hosting. They'll download a lot of open source tools where they have a lot of control, but that's not how most networks are built. So what if we had the opportunity to work with one of the strong partners that you have in the marketplace to take the things that the engineering and ops team use and put them in a package that a developer can make use of right away? And that's Dev Innovate. So it has a couple components to it. At a high level, we provide a platform on site for you to build with that will run the entire portfolio of Cisco. And we run it in a very interesting way, as I'll describe in a moment. But a lot of people say, well, Cisco, what do you have? Here's a very sophisticated example of an end-to-end -end service that stresses all the things you're hearing about at the show. Network function virtualization, orchestration, object-based control systems, virtual CPE, workflows that allow you to create dynamic services, all of these kinds of functions available to you to start working with. 
Right here we have a cloud VPN demo where you can see things like this working in real time, speaking to open daylight controllers, speaking to SDN controllers. What would it take to build that environment? It takes weeks because you have to have a whole breadth of skills to do that. And yet what you want to build is an application that differentiates. So how can we remove that time? That's available today in Dev Innovate. You might also look across the portfolio from Cisco. There's a huge amount of technology that's available to make better applications and better network systems. That's also available. But then we look into some of the open source models because the reality is Cisco doesn't do it all today. You're going to want to bring in a lot of technology that we don't provide. You're going to want to bring in technology that may be better than ours. So our goal in Dev Innovate is to give you these tools and get out of the way. So if you want to start working in the open source domain, Open Daylight here is an example. Anything available off of Git, or you want to work with controllers speaking to other devices, we want you to do that. The best thing we can do to help the market succeed is help you guys succeed. And we do this through this one integrated rack. We also add in something called Viral. This is the Virtual Internet Routing Lab. We've taken all of the router code that we have as real builds running in network devices today, and we have virtualized it. It won't run as fast, and it simulates the underlying network that it runs on, the physical interfaces, but it is the real routing code. We've taken it from a router, we put it in a virtual machine, and you can write to it. If you go and see some of the prototypes that have been built here, you'll see the SDN applications that are authored writing to viral. Because you're writing to the real routers, you just don't have to have a rack of 20 routers to prove it out. They're so real that you can take a configuration from this environment and you can load that config on a real router in your network. You could also take the configs of your routers and you could load them into this environment. So if you're creating a prototype or a new service and you want to have the network team come in and load the actual network into your development environment so you can begin to do some real application testing early in the process, what does it do to my network? How does the network need to change? Viral enables you to do that. And that comes with the system. It's the first time that a network engineering team and an application team can get together and do real kinds of simulations and application constructs early in the process. Our goal is not to make application developers network engineers or vice versa. The goal is to create an environment where they can begin to come together and use both sets of tools at the same time. So this kit sits in the middle. And here's an example of what you'll see over in Cloud VPN. This is something that many people want to build today. It's an orchestrated control scheme with a portal and back-end interfaces into BSS systems, objects defined programmatically that allow you to find the disservice and abstract it from the device, objects of the device that allow you to abstract the device functionality from the service, and the ability to do flows across an entire network and support future functionality. What would it take to build this environment? It's very challenging. It takes a lot of expertise, but we can make this available in literally 10 minutes. 10 minutes because we want the application developers to spend their energy writing the apps that matter. I have to create a front end, I have to create a workflow, I need to create new service models. That's where you need to see that focus happen because that's what makes the business different. But it needs to run on a network that's really deployed. And this is an example of the kind of sophistication that we're seeing happen in the market that we're being asked to build to. But even if you built the most abstracted and capable network, if you can't expose it through the provisioning systems, if you can't make it visible to the OSS, if you can't write interesting applications, it's not going to be of value to the end customer. So the way we do this is we give you the best hardware we have available. We want to give an environment in this subscription program that a developer can make that they're never limited by the hardware capabilities underneath it. You're writing an application, you run out of memory, you need a better router, you need a better interface, you need three routers. All of these things are things that get in the way of an application being successful. And so we want to remove that barrier. So what we've done is we've provided the best of what we have. There's a GUI that lets you have visual access to the kinds of technologies that are available there. So you don't even have to know a command line. That is our goal. An app store kind of environment where you can click on an application environment and it's running and available to you. We have a tremendous amount of compute. A lot of people call this a cloud in a box. It is. It's an enormous cloud because you need a lot of compute power to do the kinds of things that we're suggesting you have available to you. Simulating networks, running complete application stacks. So in this environment, you have six compute blades with an ability to go up to eight. But what's more interesting is we've got a very large footprint of memory. One and a half terabytes of memory spread across this platform and 240 logical cores. There's, I've not seen yet the application that can't run here. Our goal is you run multiple applications. Run the network systems, 
run the simulators, build your app environment, go to the OSS team, go with your GUI vendor, bring in your third parties, load them in VMs, load them on bare metal, build an entire development stack there in front of you that we can work with so that you can start doing real work instead of this back and forth and all these things where everyone has to build it up, configure it, make it all at one place. We've also added in a core router. This is also an open flow capable router so it participates in uh, the open daylight configuration. So if you're an individual that wants to work in open source and open daylight and that's where you want to orient, the core router that you have available is supported as well. This is our common data center interconnect router. Real data clouds use this router. So it's not any different. Also, we add our core data center switch, the Nexus 5672. It has 70 ports of one gig. It can do 10 gig, it can do 40 gig. If you're building an application that is gonna have a performance profile that stresses the network, you would never know and you couldn't characterize it. But in this environment, you have a compute environment that can do 40 gig natively out of it. You have a router and a switch that can do natively 40 gig. You can build an application environment that actually has the fastest speeds possible and it's in your development shop to build the apps. So if we have this hardware environment, then what do you do with it? Here's an example of what you would see on this today. It's a very cryptic characterization because this comes directly out of our metadata catalog. But what you see is these are all the apps that are available to run today. And we do something very, very interesting. We use OpenStack, Ceph, and open technologies in the open source domain, and we allow you to create snapshots of what you build. We provide you snapshots of what you build. Even sophisticated environments you can capture and save as a snapshotted image. The reason we do this is with that snapshot, once one group creates that snapshot, could be your group, could be our organization. As long as there's a repository of a particular environment that you're interested in, you bring that file in and it's one file and the GUI that we have has an orchestrator underneath and it tells that environment to run this, boot this. So even the most sophisticated configurations like the ones that I described, as long as it has been successfully done once, which is what we do as your partner, that file becomes available, you select that file, and it boots up an entire environment, multiple VMs, multiple partitions, multiple bare metals, whatever it takes to build that up, it's up and running in seven minutes because it's just booting. It's the time that it takes to configure a compute environment. That's where it's a cloud. So just like you go to any cloud provider and you provision Ubuntu or you provision these things, you have that. But those are in generic environments. They don't offer you the ability to snapshot more higher level applications and they don't necessarily stress and take advantage of what's in the underlying network. So if you wanted to build a 100 router network, simulate it in viral, and then snapshot it, you can. And then you go to your apps team, and you can go have them start building on it, create a new snapshot. Let's say the apps team doesn't do something right. You can back rev back to the original snapshot and do it again. It's a rapid prototyping development environment that allows you to rapidly iterate across base technology that's very complex, and then get to things that actually allow you to build at the application level. These are the kinds of things available, and you'll see that we have multiple examples of things in here. People install Ubuntu 10 times to get it working with the right driver mod. There's reasons that people have the different builds in here, and we have the documentation so you can choose which one you want. And then we get out of the way. You build what you want. So if you want to add to this, if you want to wipe it and build your own orchestrated system, you can. We want to give you the tools because the developers really lead what's happening in the marketplace, and this is the way we can deliver everything in our portfolio in an environment that lets you run at a high performance level. We want you to go to the devel development shops, go to the engineering side, and now in the engineering side and the scale side says, well, how scalable is it? Well, it can go up to 40 gig. It probably exceeds the capacity they have. Well, what's your security policy? We have virtual firewall functionality. We've gone into viral. We've built some routing domain configurations that allow us to protect the entire network. Oh, We've actually sampled the network data and been able to configure it with your network engineering team so that we understand how it has an impact on the network. And they've even made some modifications to some of the bandwidth profiles, maybe some of the route domain, because they understand how to do that now. All coming out of this and then snapshot it along the way. This is a marketing slide of all the virtualized portfolio from Cisco. There's a massive movement taking the physical infrastructure, making it virtualized with the intention of making it exposed to application developers. So SDN is just the tip of the iceberg. NFV is just the tip of the iceberg. What you see is massive virtualization across the overall portfolio, across whole verticals, security, infrastructure, management, mobility, 
All of these things are available now or coming very soon based on the color coding. Our goal is to continue to onboard these, make them available so that you can start working with them right away. We've seen some of these scenarios take six and nine months by the time somebody wants to start building something, securing the software, licensing, loading, getting the skill set, getting the hardware available, configuring the hardware, all to do one thing, and yet things are changing now to a much more agile environment. You need to start doing these kinds of cross-portfolio solutions in weeks, not spending weeks waiting to stand it up. So this does that. We have this back in the back of the show live, by the way. Uh, after the session, I'm more than happy to spend as much time as you like. We've got whiteboards. We can spec out what you're trying to do. But the very, very loud rack you see back there is the sound of a production system. That is running the environment that you see over here. If you come in, you see Cloud VPN. If you want to go look at viral, that's what we're running on that environment. So we wanted to make sure that you guys could see that it's real and the kinds of things available. And we do have our engineers there that can explain how we do that snapshotting. This is what's changed. The ability to start with everything available to you has dramatically shifted what customers are doing with us. This is an example of a very lighthearted sprint where we sat down with a team that said, we need to move very quickly. They now have this platform in beta. All right, it took them three days to get the entire platform up and running. It took longer to set up the power than it did to set up the operating environment. I've never seen that happen before. They then started to onboard some of our model definitions so they could do rapid prototyping based upon a model architecture rather than explicit into ASNMP or device registration. And then they loaded viral because they want to load their network in here, put some scenarios together. I've got new object models for applications. What does that do to my network? They're 30 days into the project. That's it. Now they start to look at how I can do virtual routers to have endpoints inside of this config and do route policy in the virtual domain. That's a week. And then you start to get very sophisticated about how you build the service, how you do the health of the VMs, how you automate the topology systems. That's where you want to get to. They're 30 to 40 days and they have an entire network simulated and built up to be able to do a model-driven virtualized system. Nothing I've ever seen happen. So hopefully, the key takeaways here, we try to give you our latest platforms always. We actually have a refresh built in. It's a subscription program where you pay to be in the subscription because at the end of six months, you may not want it. At the end of six months, you may want the latest technology. So it's a one-year subscription. At the end of that, if you want to stay in the program, we refresh it with the latest technology. We always want to have the innovators using the latest and greatest. We never want them starving or outdated. So every year, we refresh. We also have uh, a lot of additional programs to help you launch in production. So a lot of people say, what can I do with this box? It is limited to development. It's targeted for developers to get up and running and building new prototypes. If you want to get into production, we have a lot of ways that we can take the efficiencies here and make them available as a production network system. Uh, we've got a lot of applications, and we added so much capacity, even in the rack. A lot of you may come and say, well, I have a high-performance storage array. I have a Cisco competitor for compute, which is my default platform for OSS, BSS, or my GUI. There's extra space so that you can very easily add those components in, put them into the very robust switch, and you have your own environment. There's just no way it's going to be all us. It has to be something that you're building, so we build that in. We actually ship the entire rack as a single unit. There is no wiring. So when you come back and you see the rack, it's not 30 boxes that show up. It's a complete cloud in a box that arrives on site. It's really heavy, and you wheel it into where you need it, and then you load in the pillars that are specific to you. Where we want to go with this is to create what I call an innovation fabric where I can take these images that are snapshotted, they will run in every other innovation pod. So if Cisco has one, they can ship it with you to you. If you're a partner, you can SCP that across the network to your customer. They load that in, it runs. They basically load it into the file system, point the installer at it, and it runs that within seven minutes. So these ideas of I installed it, it doesn't work, just snapshot the image and send it back to me. I'll boot up the image in seven minutes. I'll take a look at it. I'll look at your script. I'll look at your code. I'll send it back to you with the modifications. You're just iterating on these snapshots in a rapid prototyping model. Absolutely the kinds of things that we think are going to accelerate. We already have quite a few of these deployed in beta. Our goal is that we have the ability to prototype. We can send them to our innovation centers. The Cisco Innovation Center for London is back here. They will have one of our platforms. You can go in and get hands on time, build something, snapshot it. If you're a partner, you can have one in your environment. You can snapshot it and build it there. Or if you're a customer, you can participate. And customers are starting to see the benefit. A lot of customers have distributed development groups, network team, app, you know, app team. Maybe there's multiple app teams. They have the same need to share this environment. It's, we want complex solutions that you guys want to rapidly prototype. 
This is the target for doing so. Um, and there's a lot of things we can provide in addition. This is a big environment to do a lot of things. You may say, that's too much. I just want to get into the cloud. I want to create a partition. I want to build something. We have that back there called the DevNet Sandbox. Maybe you just want to see what's possible. There's a portal back there that you can see what's available in a very quick demo. Our goal is to make it super easy for a developer to see what we have. There's a little demo back there, five minutes on the web. Learn about it. It's all in one place on the web. Build it. We have a cloud partition that you can start building it. There's real hardware available to test against. Or maybe you want to build within your own environment, and then we want you to be able to launch it all in a, a schedule of time that we've never seen before. So that's Dev Innovate. We have a lot loaded. Uh, do we have any time for questions or not? If there's any urgent questions, happy to take one. Uh, but we'll be in the back of the show, back in the Dev Innovate space. I'm happy to spend as much time as you like. Thank you very much, everybody, for your time.